Okay, let's have a class, and then we're going to continue to talk about uh, the uh, antibiotic uh, antibiotic uh, for the curing or inhibitor bacteria. So this is what we mentioned. We start here. We talk about the antibacterial mechanism for antibiotics, including inhibition cell wall, inhibition protein synthesis, inhibition nuclear acid synthesis, metabolic possibly inhibited, and the cell membrane integrity is in inhibited. Now, and I said that the safest way for uh, antibiotics to curing or inhibit bacteria is inhibition of cell wall synthesis because human being and animal cell do not have a cell wall. Only bacteria cell has cell wall and it's more target. So we're going to talk about is the mechanism behind that. And this is a very important slide. We're going to talk much deeper than here and draw on the blackboard. We talk a very interesting topic, which is about penicillin. So let's talk about penicillin first. Okay. Penicillin. So we want to talk a little bit of chemistry. Uh, I, I like to talk about chemistry all the time. So what's a penicillin? What it looks like? Okay, the penicillin structure, if you want to draw, it looks like this, CH2, CO, NH2, then you go here, you have CH, then you have CH, then you have, the, um, you have a, a C, it's a carbonyl group, then N, you go here, you have S, you have C, then you have CH, you have COOH, go here, you have CH3, and you go have CH3. It looks like complicated. Yeah, you don't like it, I know. Too complicated to talk. So we want to say something about here. How you understand? It? This is called a penicillin V. A penicillin G, so penicillin G is coming from naturally from a, a modes called a penicillin. So the structure is looks like this. If we split down here, this whole section we call six prime amino penicillic acid. So you can see this is amino group there. This is the acid. Okay, carboxy group. You know that like this, OH. It's like an acid. This, this whole thing. So penicillin G when it comes out. There are some restrictions for that. Number one, this is a narrow uh, spectrum. We say antimicrobial spectrum. So what this means, this is only work for, or we say effective for, gram-positive bacteria. Uh, we'll get to the mechanism very quick. Second, this guy is acid sensitive. So what this means, if it's acid sensitive, you cannot auto take because the stomach acid will destroy the chemical, the major chemical. Now, what is the major chemical here? We draw so complicated. The major chemical structure here is this guy. This is called beta lactone. That is a major structure of a more effective structure for the penicillin. So acid sensitive, only muscle, muscular injection. This is very simple understand we have a joke when we were young. If the kids is coughing and sneezing, diagnosed with, with a, um, streptococcus ammonia or something, then go to the hospital, then we'll have a box, have an injection in the box. 
And uh, so next time when the kids is naughty, then we'll say, okay, if you still like that, we'll take you to the doctor, give you another shot. So it's like a joke, but it tells you in the old time, penicillin G is only muscle injection. <laughs> okay, now we're going to talk about how it works. So, which means antibiotic mechanism there. So, this is go back to we talk about the bacteria structure. But we know the cell wall, the major components is peptidoglycan. And what is it composed? There is NAM and NAG. If you still remember the name, I hope you still remember, that is called N acetyl glucosiamine and N acetyl muramic acids. And they are connected with alternative like this. And this is have NAG, then have NAM, then they have NAG, and then they also have NAM. Okay, now they connect it like this. When the bacteria to constructed their peptidoglycan, they need an enzyme. Trans peptides. Because we know the peptidoglycan composed by modify the sugar, which is here NAM and NAG cross linked with amino acids. So certainly there are some amino acids right here. Okay, the, 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 the amino acids. And the transpeptides, it's very interesting. People doing the research find this transpeptides. It's a protein. Of course, enzyme is a protein. And this protein we call penicillin binding protein. And this name is very ironic. So they know bacteria know penicillin is the antibiotics. But when we constructed our peptide of glycan, the transpeptase, the name is penicillin binding protein. It sounds ironic. But why? Because this is when people doing the research back in 1950. They try to find the antibiotic mechanism of the penicillin, and they name this protein, name this enzyme as penicillin binding protein. And where it binds? Lactam. It is beta lactam. So they bind it by this very special structure, beta lactam. So this happens with what's the mechanism behind it, okay? So beta lactam attacking it, less transpeptidase doesn't work, so there's no transpeptidation happened. Also, initiate self autolysis of bacteria. But I tell you one thing, there is a limitation. Penicillin G basically is working for gram-positive bacteria. We know, because the target is peptidoglycan. And not only for that, it is relatively working only for growing bacteria. What this means? which means the bacteria is continuously building or constructed their peptidoglycan. If they already have a bacteria there, if this is already existing, it is hard for them to damage it or broke it. Okay, that's a penicillin G. 
Okay, what is a penicillin V? This structure is the same. No difference. Couple of years later, people create a new structure. Okay, very similar. No major difference. But they add an O here. So make sure it is relatively, how, how we say it, it's relatively stable. So you go LNOH, you go beta letter ring, you go this guy here, you go here, and you go this guy here, exactly the same. There's no difference right here. They only added the right here. What is this guy? Penicillin V. Now penicillin V has some improvement compared to penicillin G. It is acid resistant. What this means? Because it's all here. You can orally <laughs> take in. This is important. You don't need to do a muscle injection because muscle injection, the problem is for stomach acid could be broken and make it very unconvenient. You can go to see a doctor. An oral take, you can just take the pill. That is what, to, what is today what uh, antibiotics looks like. Mm -hmm. So it can be orally taken. So that's a good, that's a good thing. However, it is still narrow spectrum. It is still narrow spectrum only for gram positive bacteria. So people are trying to do some development. These two things are natural. Okay, these are the natural stuff. Later on, people start to generate something which is we call semi synthesis. So what the products come what the products come out? We like to see the chemistry. Okay, this structure is all the same. Um, so here they do a little bit difference. Okay, they go here directly goes here. Amino group is still here. That's the same. That's the same thing. No difference. That's the same. Go here is the same. And you can draw it. When you draw, you will love this stuff. Okay, C O O H. That's the same. What do you do? They added something there. They add O C H. A methyl group there, O C H. This is what we call bulkier. And you can understand from the chemical standpoint or the chemistry structure standpoint, make it heavy, make it more stable. And this specifically for anti staphylococcus. What is this guy? Mesocillin. However, we use this too much. Is that right? We use this too much. And uh, in the hospital, is hospital encoding um, carelessness. Create nozzle Homia infection. <coughs> this is called mesocillin resistant staphylococcus. That's not looking good. But we make some progress because this is semi synthesis, which means chemistry, chemistry scientists, chemical scientists can manufacture based on the natural products. And the target is staphylococcus. In the history, it did help us a lot. What other today's stuff looks like? Later on with the develop development. Today, this structure looks like very interesting. They moved this NH right here. 
So it becomes like this. And this is new one. The new one is very interesting. They moved the here. So today, what it looks like, it becomes like this. The seminal group is moved. What is this one? Amosylin or ampicillin. What's a good advantage of that? This becomes blood spectrum, which means equally effective for gram positive and the gram negative bacteria. This is more hydrophilic. Which means, easily to be dissolved in the water, you can oral, orally take. Okay? However, there is an issue. People are using this too much. And I mentioned, some people in some country, you just are feeling not very well, you're taking antibiotics. So more and more bacteria become antibiotics. And then becomes antibiotic resistant, become a globally risk. So, theoretically, if this happens, all of these are antibiotic resistant, what we do? There is a choice, is vacuomyosin. Then the vacuomyosin comes up. Okay, do you still remember? We mentioned the vacuomyosin one time. When we talk about Clostridium difficile, Kadeem, what is the first treatment? I said it's very ironically. Clostridium difficile is caused by seedal membrane colitis because we are using antibiotics too much intensively about a week. Normal bacteria has been cured, and the microflora in the intestine is damaged. So you have a water diarrhea, plus we see the membrane chitos. So we, are we can using vancomycin. Why? The reason is the antimicrobial or antibiotic mechanism from vancomycin is a little different. So we go back and talk about this guy. <coughs> Okay, I'm going to draw a little bit of simple right here. So, peptidoglycan, uh, we mentioned about here, there is a penicillin binding protein, PBP. This is attacked by beta lactam. Now, by the way, bacteria hardly have these antibiotic resistance. Because they generate an enzyme called penicillinase, or we say beta lactamase. This will be broke down, this beta lactam structure. So the whole medicine doesn't work, the whole chemical doesn't work. Okay, if they already showing this guy doesn't work. What is the vancomycin going to be doing? The vancomycin will be directly to work attacking the amino acids. And the typically is for D and lick D and line. Yeah, that's very interesting. It is very, also a little uh, ironic. The alanyl, sorry, the an, uh, uh, the alanyl and the alanine. 
à la mire. À la mire. Now what is alanine? This is alanine. H C O O H C H three. So what's a macromelt different from beta lactam penicillin? Beta lactam attacking enzyme. Is that right? PVP. Vancomycin attacking substrate. That's different. This direct work on the amino acids. Okay, let's say beta lactam doesn't work. Vancomycin doesn't work. Bacteria is very smart. They can find a different way to prevent those drugs. Then what happened? This comes up with basic trees. Okay. Bacteria has a double layer. You know that. This is outside, this is inside. Inside doesn't work because you have find a way to crack it down. Okay, what I'm gonna do? I don't give you food. I don't give you material to build in pancreas of glycan. So I block the material used for building peptide of glycan to transfer into inside of the cell. That's what the basic tracing works. Look at here, interfere the transport of peptide glycan precursor across the membrane system. Which means you're gonna build in these things, you need these basic precursor. All kinds of chemicals, I'm gonna block it. I don't let you go in. Something like, I don't give you food. I don't give you water. So what you're gonna do? You're gonna have to, to be starvation, starved inside of the cell membrane system or cell wall system. That's what the basic tracing. And we heard about the basic tracing. Which one? That is a disc. Remember what we are differentiate. We're going to have exam next week. What are we going to differentiate? Which one is resistant? GBS, is that right? Streptococcus, Agrolactia, which one is sensitive, susceptible? Streptococcus, Pia, Genius. However, bacteria is very smart. You don't give them something in, they find a way to do. There's a lot of the bypass or the alternative transport systems, they can still get more or less some of the energy or some of the nutrition they like. So basic tracing, this is basically is static, which means inhibit bacteria grow instead of you kill them. So this is the whole story. A very typical three examples from beta lactam drugs, uh, vancomycin, and the basic tracing, we talk about the story of inhibited cell with synthesis of bacteria. If this doesn't work, the antibiotic resistance showed up, what we do? We need to use other antibiotics. They are inhibited protein synthesis. However, majority of these have side effects. Because human being has cell wall, the so human being, animals, also will do protein synthesis. And this is a ribosome, you know that? Ribosome has two subunits, 30S and 50S. This S stands for Savannah units. It's talk about the velocity of the precipitation, and add up together is not 80S, it's 70S. 
So we want to talk about some of these, okay? Not every single piece. First thing I want to talk a little bit about the coral finical. And I left this here, okay, because this is important. Coral finical. This is the one in 1950s is a first, almost the most effective blood spectrum antibiotics. Basically killed everything. However, we don't use it right now. Only life-threatening situation. Because chlorophenicol will damage the bone marrow system, will be dramatically decrease white blood cell, which means the immune system could be cracking down if you use it. Second one is tetracycline. Tetracycline right now, basically using in veterinary science area. Human being doesn't use that all, at all. It's very easy to have tetracycline antibiotic resistant bacteria comes out. But more important, they will cause discoloration of the, of the teeth. You may have a yellow teeth, a black teeth, all kinds of things will happen. Okay? Uh, Microloids, this guy here is for um, walking ammonia prevention. Now, all the others, aminoglycosides, leukosamides, those may cause hearing loss. And uh, oxalamidinose, this guy, we don't talk too much. Uh, basically, it's for intestinal bacteria in an anaerobic environment, they use it. So, this is inhibition of protein synthesis. Okay, if it doesn't work, there's other way we find it inhibition of nuclear synthesis. Uh, this is the one I've always told the students. It sounds beautiful. Inhibit nuclear gases synthesis. And the target is RNA polymerase or topoid isomerase. Let's say rifampicin, fluoroconolones, even nadic acid, all those things. But I tell you one thing, this is the least effective. Why? When we talk about the DNA replication, transcription, translation is a standard pathway. Bacteria in the real life in their very variable environment, they have a lot of the alternative and the mutations will generate. And they will find a way to still synthesis nuclear gases. So nuclear gas synthesis inhibition is least effective clinically. But what they are used for? We could use it, we could create, I'm gonna have to take this off. We can create some of the bacteria using in the lab is very effective. So, I have, let's say, a bottle and a glass of E. coli 0157H7. And this whole thing, if I spread the protein onto refactoring, had a hundred ppm parts per, per million refactoring, ref, you will see some of the colony gonna grow there. You can directly go there to do it. Because this is like an inducer, they will generate <coughs> point mutation. And if you pick the colony, you should do regrowing multiple times, let's say five times. You repeatedly strip plating onto the other plates, have refactoring 100 parts per million. This E. coli could carry on a refactoring resistant gene. Now, it can be used in the lab. Why? Let's say I have a beef product. I want to test in the effectiveness of lactic acid as antimicrobials using 5% lactic acid. So I have to inoculate E. coli on the surface. But how do you know? 
the target bacteria is only the inoculated one. It's not one naturally existing on the surface. I have to label them using refraction. So, I have to label them using RIF 0157H7. Then I will know this is the one what I inoculated, what I wanted. Which means we'll be differentiated between the target pathogen and the background flora. Because it may naturally exist in there. That's why we have to label. And this is what it used for. Now, the tricky thing is that this bacteria growing every time you need to have RIF. Because the mutation is only change chromosome instead of changing plasmid. So it's not going to stay too long. Every time you have to have a RIF in the bacterial media to keep it RIF resistant. So, just want to tell you one thing, inhibition nucleic acids could generate a bacteria resistant to certain antimicrobials and in the lab situation, but clinically not very effective. Okay, this guy you know, inhibitory metabolic pathway. Uh, this guy you absolutely know. You learn the new biochemistry class all the time. So, what is that? What is this guy? P A B A. What is the full name? Paro Amino Benzoic Acids. Why do we need this product? This is the precursor material to generate folic acid. Folic acid bacteria cannot generate by themselves, need to take it from the foods. Now folic acids, by the way, lots of your human nutrition science students, uh, if you're being pregnant and trying to be pregnant, take 400 milligram of folic acids will prevent the newborn has neurological problems. Is that right? But same thing for bacteria is important. Now we have a drug. What's a drug looks like? This is very similar. That's called a sulfur drug, a sulfur larimate. Sulfur drug. Because the structure looks very similar, so instead of the enzyme find this guy, this will be competed. So that's called a competitive inhibition. So prevent they generate folic acids. Because the structure of the sulfur drug compared to amino benzoic acids looks exactly the same. The only thing is right here. The only, only difference is here. And I said a sulfur drug is a chemical synthesized antibiotics. But we still call it antibiotics. And it is different from the penicillin G, which is natural from the penicillin. Okay, so this is inhibition of metabolic pathway. Next one, inhibition of cell membrane integrity. This is the leakage of cellular content, contents, polymaxing. Do you know what is that product? Ornament. You go to CVS, you get a like scream, like a cream. Skin cream, if it's itching, ornament. That is basically is inhib inhibit bacteria grow, not really kill it. So you have it, you're not feeling itching anymore, but does not does not necessarily mean the bacteria is gone because it inhibits them to grow. Okay, so it's very interesting with this topic. This is antibacterial targets, <coughs> a conclusion figure which is tells you what they are target to curing the bacteria. So we talk about beta-lactin drugs, penicillin, vicomycin, bacitracin for cell wall. We talk about polymixin B for cell membrane integrity, sulfur drug for 
metabolic pathway, lots of them for protein synthesis, and uh, for nickel and the refamping for nuclear gas synthesis. It's a very good conclusion table uh, to study. Okay, so here we end up with this section talk about antibiotics. Uh, all the ma major information. Uh, by the way, I got a put on the e-campus. Uh, the weekend is a study guidelines and the practice exams and case studies. Tuesday, I'm going to talk about the review. Thursday, we have exam. Uh, we left one thing we haven't talked. What the other thing? How to control bacteria. We haven't talked about this information. We are going to go over it relatively quick and relatively easy. Okay, we talk about antibiotics. That is certainly is uh, important. But we're going to talk about the general of the bacteria control. So the first slide is relatively easy. Cytal versus static. That's a terminology used in the bacterial area a lot. What do we inside out? Killing bacteria. What is static? Inhibit. And we know the gross curve. You can understand it about that. This is never even started. And this is only the lag phase will be longer. It's still going to grow. So side out and static. That's the first one. 